Well, good day, and thank you for coming back to the next video. Because I want to do a topic that's probably incredibly important these days concerning the timing of the second coming. Now, I know Jesus speaks about the fact that we're not going to know the day or the hour, but the Apostle Paul speaks about in Thessalonians that um, we don't need to have anything written to us for those who are watching because we know about the times and the seasons that we're in. So when, when you read the Old Testament, and I have Michael 1 up here, um, many people sit and ponder what it'll be like the day that Jesus returns to the earth. And when you read Michael 1, you can get a, a firsthand um, witness of that from the prophet Micah. You can see, hear you peoples, all of you, pay attention, O earth, and all that it is in it, and let the God be a witness against you, the Lord in his holy temple. For behold, the Lord is coming out of his place. That sounds like Joel chapter 2. And will come down and tread the high places of the earth, and the mountains will melt under him, and the valleys will split open like wax before him. And why is the Lord coming like this? For the transgression of Jacob, the Christians and the Jews, and the sins of the house of Israel. What is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria, Washington, D.C.? And what are the high place of Judah, literally over in Jerusalem, earthly Jerusalem? Therefore I will make Samaria, Washington, D.C., a heap in the open country, a place for the planting of vineyards, and I will pour down her stones into the valley. And all of her carved images, all of those statues we have over there in Washington, D.C., will be beaten into pieces. And then the Lord continues on, and then we hear about him riding a horse. Sorry, this is oh, this is Michael 1, I'm sorry. When we get to the end of Michael 1, that's Habakkuk 3, and we learn about how he's going to take the little children. I can show you that in a minute. Zephaniah 1 has a similar has a similar description, and this is not Revelation 19, this is Revelation 6, Jesus riding that white horse. I will utterly sweep away everything from the face of the earth. I will sweep away every man and beast. I will sweep away the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea. I will cut off mankind from the face of the earth. Okay. Be silent before the Lord, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guests. It's like Isaiah 13, I think. And on the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the officials and the king's sons and all who array themselves in foreign attire. The day of the Lord's sacrifice? What day is that? Is that Passover? Didn't Jesus sacrifice himself on Passover? And on that day I will punish everyone who leaps over the threshold. So the Lord is coming to kill, punish the officials and the king's sons. We learn about that in the book of Isaiah in two chapters. It's right here. The Lord has a day of vengeance, right? And it's it's at the sixth seal, and all the host of heaven shall rot away. You know those fallen angels? As the sky rolls up like a scroll. That's the sixth seal. And all the host shall fall. That's the fallen angels, okay? Like leaves from a falling fig tree. For the Lord has a day of vengeance and a year of recompense for the cause of Zion. So we read in Isaiah 24 a similar event. The host here. And on that day the Lord will punish the host of heaven. That's the same host of heaven that are here. These aren't the regular angels. These are the fallen angels that reside in the heavenly realm that we cannot perceive. And in Revelation 12 verse 9, Michael and his angels are going to defeat Satan and his host and kick them out of the heavenly realm down to the earthly realm. The host of heaven will no longer be able to exist in that supernatural high frequency state. The Lord will take that pleasure away from them. They will have to be down here on earth. When you read Revelation 12, 9, it speaks about that. Woe to the earth, because who comes to you, it says in Revelation 12. But here, this is when the Lord punished them at the sixth seal. And then, but lo and behold, on that, at the sixth seal, the Lord is going to punish the kings of the earth and they will be gathered together as prisoners in a pit of hell they will be shut up in prison then the moon will be confounded and the sun ashamed then we read in isaiah 63 he has a day of vengeance 
at Basra, where he's going to spatter blood all over the place. This is the year of his redeemed, 144,000. So when we read the other areas of the, like, like Zephaniah 1, we can understand now what, what's going on here. And on that day of the Lord's sacrifice, which appears to be Passover when he sacrificed himself, but haven't we already passed over Passover? Well, I don't think so. I will punish the king's officials. So where are we on the calendar? That's always the question. Where are we on the calendar? So I posted something on my community page. You guys can go there and look at it about um, speculating about the harvest dates. Speculation only. Okay, It's not a thus saith the Lord. It's reading the word of God, studying it to see what it means and the clues that were given to us. And we, we see here in the book of Deuteronomy that God explains that the first month of the year is the month of Abib. And Abib is ripened grain or barley grain or corn grain or something like that and we learn in Deuteronomy 1, Deuteronomy 16 verse 1 the Lord says to Moses observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover to the Lord your God for in the month of Abib the Lord brought you out of the land of Egypt so the month of Abib this this is the month when the barley gets ripe that's that's what it really means so when the barley gets ripe, that's your first month. And that was the month that I took you out of the land of Egypt. So we don't have the true Passover until we get a bib, until we have ripened barley. And I was watching somebody who's aware, a YouTube channel, I don't even know the name of it, I could find it. He was saying that as of early March, a week before Passover, mid-March, that the amount of ripened barley was only 17%, and that, in his opinion, was not enough ripened barley to have a first fruits harvest. So we had to wait to the next month. And on the, the lunar calendar, the new moon sliver calendar, today is a bib one. And Edward Umling had a word about this. Back he gave it March 22nd. Five days before, what we thought was the full moon on a bib, which was Passover, which I would say, using the definition for the first month given to Moses in Deuteronomy 16, the abib, there was not enough ripened fruit to call last month the first month. So we had last month was actually the 13th month. Okay, so when you read this prophetic word from... Um, from Edward Umling, he's basically saying that the month of Abib, the full moon, danger. Clean your vessels and do it now, and who can say, thus it is now? For he the Lord comes with his angels about. Who will know but these who shout? Those shouting from the rooftops will be the 144,000. See him now, his face behold. Those who are left shall now be told, told. After the first fruits are taken, those who are left behind will be told by the 144,000. Left here to tell him and explain what happened. My judgments come, for they are swift, and they are now in the month Abib. The Lord says Abib, the month Abib. The Lord says Abib, full moon, danger for America. So the full moon in the true month of Abib, based on Deuteronomy, using the land of Israel as our go-by, is April 26th, 27th is the full moon, which would appear to be the month of Iyar, but since it really isn't, Iyar is the second month, we just began the first month of Nisan. So the first Passover has yet to come. Calamity strike. I, str I smite the land across the central plain, says the Lord. The year of harvesting grapes. So we still have time for the first fruits Passover event, April 26th, if this is the year. And we still have time for the second fruits to be in the second month. So you guys can go to my link this on, on my community page, and I have a calendar here you guys can download if you like. It speaks what I would think possibly using this pattern would be. This is all just guesstimates on my part. So here in late April, top left-hand corner is the Gregorian date. The bottom right-hand corner is the Hebrew date. So this is the month of Abib. Okay, Passover is Monday, April 26th. 
Well, I'm thinking that the Swedish boy's rapture vision might happen over that weekend before that, but I don't know. Umling's full moon word is right here on April 27th. And th this is the first fruits that are taken, the wise virgins. Then we have a time of trial. And then we have the second fruits, which would be the Noah event down here in May with the second Passover. So I want to talk about what the Bible... Now, the Bible's a big book. And for someone to just pick up the Bible one day and says, hey, gee, when's, when's my Lord and Savior going to come back? You have to study it for a while. I know a lot of us have. It seems to me, though, at times I'm shown things that I've never seen before. And this all has occurred in the last few years. So I put together a document that looks at the clues given to us in Scripture. It's not stating a thus saith the Lord day, but this could be any year. So for any year, we see a set of clues. I found a set of clues, seven of them, that point to the return of our Lord in the second Hebrew month or the second spring month, which would be on the Gregorian calendar, May. You could call it late April, early May. Now, the second Hebrew month is the month of I.R., and that is late April, early May, or May, basically, mostly May. So when you look at the seven clues given to us through Scripture, there's seven of them here, and they all point to this time frame, April, May. So I would challenge you, help me out here. Go to the Bible, find out if you can see any other time frame that is alluded to when the Messiah would return. Old Testament or New Testament with a reference to a time frame. Many people think the Feast of Trumpets in the fall is when the rapture would be. I've never thought that. I've always thought it would be more of a Pentecost time frame. But we'll see by looking at these clues. We'll go through them one by one. But for you, please leave a comment. If you know of a reference to a month of the year, that alludes to the Messiah returning. Okay, so the seven clues are this. Jesus says, when summer is near, Matthew 24, he's referencing the return of the Son of Man. The Song of Solomon, when the rain is over and gone and the flowers appear on the earth. So the reason I have this blue is this is May. Summer is near the month before June, which is May. The rain is over in April and gone and the flowers appear on the earth in May. You've heard the saying, April showers bring May flowers. That's from the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, when he goes and, and tells his bride to come away with him. The days of Noah. Jesus said that his coming will be as in the days of Noah, which is in the second month. Now, did the Noah event occur in the fall? Probably. But still, we now reckon the first and second month of the year to be counted in the spring, according to Exodus 12. When God told uh, Moses and uh, Aaron that. The Acts chapter 1 church, when Jesus ascended, he ascended and the angel said, Jesus will return in like manner. Now he ascended on the 27th day of the second month. Then we have this incredible clue from Numbers 9. We'll look at that. There's a, there's a passage in Numbers that allows for a second Passover in the second month. And the second Passover is for two groups of people. A group, one group that has been in war and has been defiled by touching a dead body. And the other group is for somebody who had been on a long journey. And Jesus tells three parables about he himself is the man who's been on a long journey and is going to return. So he would return and fulfill the second Passover. We know that Jesus already fulfilled the first Passover. At his first coming. So would he fulfill the second Passover at his second coming? As the man who went on a long journey? I would say yes. This is to me the most clearest exacting reference to when Jesus is going to return. Right here. The second Passover. Buried in the Old Testament book of Numbers that few Christians have ever even cracked open and decided to read. Then we have in Exodus 16, the manna began to fall on the 15th day of the second month. And Jesus had a grumbling discussion with his religious Pharisees about this manna falling. And Jesus made the, made the proclamation that he himself is like the manna that fell in the wilderness. 
and in exodus 16 we learn that it fell on the 15th day of the second month which is essentially the passover which is the 14th day of the second month and then we have king hezekiah pattern king hezekiah was one of the only good kings and in second chronicles 30 here we go again this old testament book that nobody reads pretty much that sits in the churches i've never heard about it once in my church hezekiah has a huge reunion gathering which mimics what jesus will have when he returns the two sticks in ezekiel 37 coming back hezekiah was a king of the southern king of judah but he had a big party a big reunion party in the second passover the second month where he invited the northern kingdom from ephraim and manasseh and zebulon and all those and the couriers were sent out we'll read about this lean about we'll read about this in a minute so here we have seven clues please if you can come up with another clue either in the second month or any other month please leave it in the comments and it has to be a direct reference to a month of the year okay all right um, these are the days in the second month for the one for the ones in green we actually have days of the month so the days of Noah the tenth day of Noah is when Noah load, loaded the ark we also have for Passover on the tenth day of the month in Exodus 12 that's when the Passover lamb would be selected now if you're not familiar with the Passover lamb being selected on the tenth day of the month if you just go to Exodus 12 right here the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt this month shall be the beginning of months the first month for you tell the congregation of Israel on the tenth day of this month every man shall take a lamb according to his father's house a lamb for the household and they shall keep this lamb on for four days and then slaughter it on the fourteenth day of the month okay so even though this is for the Passover it still stands for the second Passover so on the tenth day of the second month those celebrating the second Passover will go and take their lamb which happens to be the same day that Noah started to load the ark with the blameless I'm sorry with the the clean animals two by two so we have a blameless land lamb on the tenth day of the second month for the second Passover and we have the clean and blameless animals two by two being ushered into the ark the 14th day of the second month is when the Passover lamb was slain that's the same time frame that Hezekiah had his party the 15th day of the month is when the manna fell in the wilderness on the children of Israel and Jesus compared himself to that manna we'll read about that on the 17th day of the month second month that's when God himself shuts the door to Noah's ark then Jesus makes a reference in Luke 13 when the master of the house rises and shuts the door well, it's the same illusion right there, 17th day of the month. The 27th day of the second month from Acts chapter 1. Now, it doesn't say the 27th day of the second month, but you can figure that out by reading uh, the progression of the calendar and the days when Jesus was uh, crucified and when he rose and then he walked the earth for 40 days. So on the 27th day of the second month, that's when he ascends into heaven. And the angel said he'll return in like manner possibly on the same day and then that's when Noah's ark that's when Noah leave the ark a year and ten days later from the seventeenth day okay so you guys can download this document please share with your Christian friends so in Matthew 24 we've all read this Jesus says from the fig tree learn this lesson as soon as its branches become tender and puts out leaves you know that summer is near but concerning that day no one knows not even the angels nor the son but the father that's the day i think it says when heaven and earth will pass away so when heaven and earth will pass away at the end of the one thousand year reign before the new earth and the new heaven is created right as it's being created that's the day that appears that no one knows the day or the hour for as the days of noah so will the coming of the son of man be we just read that the days of Noah are the 10th day to the 17th day of the second month. And then Jesus goes on to speak about two men will be in the field, one will be taken, one will be left. Well, taken where? Well, we learn about that in Luke 17. To the place where the eagles gather, the escape pods from Psalm 68, the same type of escape pods or fiery chariots that Elijah left on but Jesus makes a promise to us in John chapter 14 he said in my father's house in my father's house what's his father's house 
I think we might know, the dwelling place of God. Hebrews 12, but you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, where the innumerable angels, the festive gathering to the church of the firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven and judge of all, and Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. See, Mount Zion, the, the, the dwelling place of God, the heavenly Jerusalem, is not a dirt hill in, in the earthly Jerusalem that's referred to as Sodom in Revelation 11. The Mount Zion, the city of the living God, is this huge monstrosity of this beautiful heavenly city with these 12 gates, each one that's a pearl. Here we learn about this city in Revelation 21. But in Revelation 21, this holy city, New Jerusalem, it comes down out of heaven and it joins the earth at the end of the thousand years. But surprisingly, Psalm 48 gives us a clue to something. We learn in Psalm 48 that the kings of the earth, for behold, the kings are assembled, they come together. As soon as they saw it, what is it? It what? It. Well, Psalm 48 gives us the answer. Great is the Lord and greatly is to be praised in the city of our God, not a dirt hill in earthly Jerusalem, his holy mountain, high up, beautiful in elevation, the joy of the whole earth. The, the dirt hill in earthly Jerusalem is not the joy of the whole earth. But this holy city of our God lifted high up in elevation, this Mount Zion in the far north, above the North Pole, the city of our great king, with her citadels, her walls, God is made known as his fortress. So when the kings, so when the sky is rolled up like a scroll, remember the sky rolling up like a scroll? What happens when the sky is rolled up like a scroll? We, we learn about that already. So Isaiah 34, when the sky rolls up like a scroll, so when the sky rolls up like a scroll and that heavenly city is seen by the kings of the earth, they run for the hills, the sixth seal. At the same time, our Lord will punish the host of heaven, the kings of the earth. They will be gathered together in a pit. They will be shut up in prison. The moon will be confounded and the sun ashamed. This is completely different than what everybody thinks. But this is what scripture says. This makes me excited. I'm not worried about Barack Obama riding that white horse. Jesus is riding that white horse. We learn that in Habakkuk 3. I'm not even going to go there, but I think I got it here, yeah. No, I don't have it here. But anyway, that's what's going to happen when this new city is going to be revealed to the entire world. It's going to be mind-blowing, this dwelling place of God. For behold, the kings are assembled. They come together. As soon as they saw this floating city in the sky, about the size of the moon, coming close shining brighter than the sun, Isaiah says, Isaiah 31 or 32, seven times, they were astounded. The kings were in panic. They took flight. Trembling took hold of them. Anguish as a woman in labor. Okay? It's not going to be what we think, is it, when this thing exposes itself. Okay, let me go back. I went off on a tangent. I just wanted to make all that clear. Okay, so we have this, this Days of Noah thing. Um, second month, 10th day to the 17th day. Jesus says, but his coming are as the days of Noah. Okay, And the Lord's going to take his faithful followers to that house, his father's house in the sky. Okay, so we learn from the Song of Solomon that he's going to come for us in the second spring month, look what it says. The voice of my beloved, behold, he comes, leaping over mountains. Didn't we just read that? Leaping over mountains? Is this about Solomon? Was Solomon leaping over mountains when this was written? I, I don't think so. When you go to Micah, Micah says, For behold, the Lord is coming out of his place, and he will come down and tread the high places of the earth. That's going to be a sight to see. And the mountains will melt under him, and the valleys will split open like wax. This is not Revelation 19, because there's darkness here. There's no darkness in Revelation 19. There's no shaking, there's no earth breaking up. This is Revelation 6. And then we get into the 7th 
Revelation 7 and 8, when the world just, just breaks apart, Isaiah 24. So right here we have the Lord, Jesus himself. This is describing Song of Solomon. It's describing he, that's Jesus, coming, leaping over the mountains. My beloved is like a gazelle, a young stag. Behold, there he stands behind the wall, gazing through the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says, Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. This is a rapture of the bride, the bride that has made herself ready. For behold, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come. The voice of the turtle dove is heard. The, the fig tree ripens. The fig tree is ready to be, the fruit to be picked in June, July, but it's ripening in April, May. The fig tree ripens, the vines are in blossom. Look out and look at the trees. I have two blossoming trees in my backyard right now. They've blossomed. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my beautiful one. Come away. That's clearly a representation. This is not the fall time frame. This is late spring. Clearly. That's what we get out of Song of Solomon. And here's the ascension. I mentioned this earlier. When the angels say, This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. And that was the 27th day of the second month. Then we have the second Passover. This thing is huge to understand this one. I think Nick Vanderland showed this last year. This was incredible to find. So Numbers chapter 9 is right here. The book of Numbers. Who reads the book of Numbers to get anything? Well, Nick found it and I saw his video and I thought, hey, I'm taking it. So the second Passover was a allowed those Hey, look, let, me, let me speak what it says here. Speak to the people of Israel saying, if one, any one of you or your descendants, that would be Jesus, is unclean, but he's not unclean, through touching a dead body or any one of your descendants is on a long journey, we'll hear about that, he shall still keep the Passover of the Lord in the second month on the 14th day of the month. And they shall eat unleavened bread, the same whole thing that the first Passover had you do with the second Passover. So Jesus already fulfilled the first Passover. When he died on the cross as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world at his first coming. But at his second coming, it appears that he is the man who went on a long journey. And he will fulfill the second Passover as Moses, Passover as Moses instructs. Recall the parables that Jesus told about a man who went on a long journey. So Jesus makes a reference. Well, also, the harlot woman, the church, from Proverbs 7.20, speaks of her husband returning at a full moon. Now, it doesn't say at the second Passover, but Passover appears to be on a full moon or at the time appointed. So Luke chapter 20, a man planted a vineyard and rented it out to vine growers and went on a journey for a long time. At the harvest time, the owner says, what shall I do? And I'll send my beloved son at the harvest time on that long journey at the second Passover Connecting that back up with Numbers 9. Matthew 25. For it will be like a man on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants settled his account. So he's going to come back, second coming, for the harvest, and to settle accounts with his service. servants. That means give gifts, payment. Mark 13. Be on guard, keep awake. You do not know what the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey. Same thing. Therefore, stay awake. Stay awake. So here, the third parable about this journey, we're told, we're exhorted to stay awake. So many in the church are asleep. They're not even watching. Matthew 24. We have this reference to Noah. One will be taken, one will be left. Then we in Proverbs chapter 7, the harlot church. For my husband, the person speaking is the harlot, who is the harlot church, is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. Numbers 9. And he'll, he took a bag of money with him. At the full moon, second Passover, he comes home from that long journey. So the conclusion is, the days of Noah, which Jesus says would be like the days of the Son of Man, see Luke 17, occur on the 17th day of the second month. And Noah loads the ark on the 10th day. If we compare that to the second Passover, we see here we have two, three things pointing to the second Passover. Okay, here's another one that just 
I fell, I fell into one day last year, I think. Jesus is comparing himself to the manna, the manna that falls down from heaven. So when you read John 6, Jesus is having a discussion with those stodgy Pharisees. They're always giving them the business. They're always complaining about things. You're doing this, you're doing that. You heal a man's hand on the Sabbath, all that kind of stuff. You know, your your disciples are growing out. You notice how his disciples go out and pick grain on the Sabbath. Is that a clue from that there's going to be a harvest on the Sabbath? Anyway, that just came to my mind. Okay, so when you read John chapter 6, Jesus answered them. Jesus says, Do not grumble among yourselves. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread he himself, that comes down from heaven so that so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. And that always confused people. They just, they just got up and walked off when he said that. So Jesus is the bread of life. He compared himself to be the manna that came down out of heaven. Now, when we go to Exodus 16, we have a very similar discussion going on. This time it's Moses. And Moses is being the people of Israel, the whole congregation, are grumbling. See the, the yellow text? They're grumbling at Moses and Aaron. And then the Lord says to Moses, Behold, I'm about to rain down bread from heaven. And what we learn here when we study the Old Testament we learn that this bread, this manna, came out of heaven and fell on the 15th day of the second month. There's another clue, the second month. So what's not included in John chapter 6, Jesus could have said, I am the living bread that came down out of heaven on the 15th day of the second month. But he didn't say that, but we can read that in Exodus 16 and know that that's a huge clue for us. You can see that these dead nuts clues, these clues that are just unabashed, they are pointing to the second month. What you do is you tie the New Testament with the Old Testament and you get an exacting clue like this Numbers 9. Who reads Numbers 9? I can bet you that there is 99.5% of Christians have no idea about the second Passover because they don't read it and they're not taught it. And frankly, even those in the synagogues don't even know about it because I came across a Jew one time and I asked him about this second Passover and he had no clue about it. Okay. All right, so the last one is this Hezekiah is an archetype of Jesus. And his second Passover celebration mimics the, the wedding supper of the Lamb, the gathering, the reunion. I'm not going to go through it. You guys can read this. But what Hezekiah did is exactly what Jesus is going to do. And if you're watching this video and you're a harvest worker, then this is where you come in, the couriers. See, Hezekiah sent out messengers with a message. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. You can see it right here. Here it is right here. This is Hezekiah's message. Read this here. I'll read it out for you. This was the letter that the couriers, the harvest workers, went from town to town in Ephraim and Manasseh. Ephraim and Manasseh? That's the northern kingdom. Does that sound familiar? Ephraim and Manasseh? Also in Judah. So the letter went like this. People of Israel, of the northern kingdom, Christians, return to the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac and, Aaron, Isaac and Israel, that he may return to you who are left, who have escaped from the land of the king of Assyria. See, the king of Assyria is going to come and rule the world, and people are going to escape before him. That's who I think the Antichrist is. That's the Old Testament version of the Antichrist. What I think at least. But Jesus kills this guy, believe it or not. He kills him. Then he goes to the pit of hell. And then he rises up. And then in Revelation 11, this Antichrist figure, this beast, he kills the two witnesses after he rises from the pit of hell. But prior to the pit of hell event, Jesus killed him. That's what the scriptures say. So, people of Israel, return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Same thing we have now, but it's Joel chapter 2 we're going to be telling people. So, the harvest workers are these couriers. And they celebrated the Passover in the second month on the 14th day of the month. And look who was ashamed. 
The priests and the Levites were ashamed and consecrated themselves. The modern day pastors and rabbis are going to be ashamed when the little ones are stolen away and taken because they didn't teach the end times. They didn't prepare their flocks for this. We learn about that here. Jesus comes like a thief in the night. Jeremiah 50. Behold, like a lion coming up from the thicket of the Jordan. For who is like me? What shepherd, pastor, or rabbi can stand before me? Therefore, hear the plan the Lord has made against Babylon. The Revelation 18 Babylon. Surely the little ones, the children of the flock, shall be torn away, drawn up, and those left behind will be desolate. At the sound of the capture of Babylon, the entire earth will shake. You can read about the other here. There's so many scriptures about the little ones being taken. Here's that Michael 1. For the children you love will be snatched away. Make yourself bald, for the little ones have been removed from you. I've, I've gone over these scriptures many times, guys. So I know you're familiar with them. So, back to my study. So you can see the second Passover is when Hezekiah had this joyful celebration of reunion between Israel, the Christians, and Jews, the Judah. This is going to be the, the newer version. That was a great joy in Jerusalem for since the days of Solomon and the son of David, since the days of Solomon, son of David, the whole house of Israel had been there to have a celebration like this. So there wasn't since those days because they had split apart. But they had a mini reunion here under Hezekiah, the good king. So with that, guys, I think that is about it. I, I still I, I marvel at these seven clues. I just hope and pray it's this year, guys. Let me show you one more thing. Now, I have a little bit of a controversial theory on something, and that is the year that Jesus was crucified. Now, I, I've listened to a couple of people and teachers. The early church fathers stated that Jesus' earthly ministry was about a year long. So I believe that he started his earthly ministry at Passover, John chapter 2, and he ended it one Passover later. And 28 AD was when he would have been killed, crucified. And if you look that year, 28 AD, Nisan 14, Passover then, was April 26th. Now, we might have the weekend days and the Sabbaths mixed up here, but I found it interesting that Nisan 14, Passover of 28 AD, the day of the Lord's sacrifice, was April 26th. Okay? There was a 13th month that year, according to the calculated calendar. Let's go to the year 2021. Now, we know that Nissan 1 really is 8R2, so IR2, IR, is really Nissan 1. Let's look at Nissan. Let's look at Abib one, and we see that Abib one is April thirteenth, and that Passover, the second, the first Passover, really, is Abib fourteen IR, but it really is should be Nissan or Abib. So Passover really is April twenty sixth. So the year twenty twenty one, assuming that we have an extra thirteenth month, because the because the um, the grain wasn't ripe, 2021 has the same exact year as 28 A.D. when Jesus was crucified. See, Nissan 1 was then, was April 13th. 2021, Nissan 1, a B1, is April 13th. So I find that to be very interesting. Okay, guys, I'll let you go. Please share this video. Have a great day and God bless you.